Hello everyone, I'm Dear Myrtle, your friend in genealogy, but you know this channel is all about creating mini journals so that I may share artifacts and heirlooms from uh, my ancestors with my grandchildren. I make a mini journal to tell the story and place them in the old steamer trunk upstairs in my office. And since my grandchildren can't be here in person to go through that old steamer trunk, I'm going to um, read it for them. There's two challenges, a new word and a map challenge in this particular journal. Okay, so uh, those of you who watched a previous little short subject video, I plan to just use this trifold uh, as the mini journal this time, but it was too small to hold the photos um, of Mo Clips and the river. So uh, I, I made this folder with two pockets on the inside to accommodate everything. So here's a little tuck spot that says, this journal is all about our family trips to Mo Clips and later Claylock when I was a child. This goes with our stepmother Blanche's rock collection. Now, this is an agate. You can almost see through it. Um, others are jasper, etc. And you can see they're very polished. That's because dad hooked up an old fan. Oh, here's another piece of agate. He hooked up an old fan to a uh, uh, homemade rock polishing item that he made. And he put these rocks in the can with the sand, the water and sand, and the fan would continue to roll that um, can until these items became more polished. All right. And this brass uh, plat platter or plate uh, is also from Dad and Blanche's home. So let me tell you more about it. Okay, we open it up says we're going to learn a new word and take a challenge. These stones in this tray were collected by my father and Blanche, our beloved stepmother, on the west side of Washington State, where the Mo Clips River feeds into the Pacific Ocean. Estuary, where the tidal mouth of a river feeds into salt water, or where that fresh water uh, joins the salt water. And here is the map challenge. I know they can do it. I'm giving them little cheerful things. Find Mo Clips on a map. Probably want to use Google Maps. And then answer this question. What Indian reservation, and that reservation is the keyword, is directly north? And there's a clue. You can read it there. It starts with a Q. And there's a little bit of a clue as well. Good luck. Should I be playing the Jeopardy music right about now, grandchildren units? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we're going to open this folder, and I have two pockets. I could put things on this side, but I didn't put anything in there. There's a map, and this is Google Maps to show you here is Seattle. Let me find my pointer. There is Seattle. And there's two ways to get over here. Well, you could take a helicopter, but there's no place in particular to land. Um, you take the ferry from Seattle across, cut down through Shelton, out to Aberdeen, um, and then you turn north on the highway. It's not really a highway. It's one lane each way. Once you get there to Mo Clips, we always stayed at high tide. Here is the river, and here's where it feeds into the ocean. And the very best place to get agates is not in the ocean, but right here. When this water comes in, when the tide comes in, this water is very rough. It's also very rough going out. Um, but let me show you a picture of what it looks like. Okay, these are some of the pictures I have. Um, this is part of the estuary because the ocean's out here to the uh, left. And this is at mean tide. Mean tide means 
there's really no water flowing one way or the other. Tide's not going out, not going in. It's right in the middle. I don't know why they don't call it middle tide, but they don't. And then this shows you how rocky the riverbed is. And you have to look hard to find agates. And they've got to be big enough so that they can go through the rock um, uh, process, the, the polishing, the rock polishing process. Because uh, it actually rubs away part of the, of the rock itself. All right. And then this is clay lock. Now, interestingly enough, you can tell that at um, Moclips, you're at sea level. But up at Claylock, another interesting place that's north, and I've labeled these on the back, all of the places where you stay are way up on a bluff, and you have to find your way down through various pathways, and this is always falling into the sea. And then you get to walk along. Um, it's wonderful to have a picnic out here on the logs, and of course, this is the Pacific Ocean west of Washington State. So kind of cool things. Let me put this back. And as always, I'm telling my grandchildren how they are related to my dad and me, their moms and dads. And uh, so they know how they are related to the, do we call it an archivist? If they have archived a bunch of precious little stones. Now, somebody asked me why this was on the uh, table in my front living room. And it's because it makes me happy. It makes me remember looking for these little stones. Is this one big enough? Is that one too small? That kind of thing. Ooh, I wonder what this will look like when it gets polished in Dad's Rock Polisher. Those are all very wonderful memories. Now, the Jasper is usually reddish, like decidedly deep, like rusty red. This may also be Jasper. I don't know, but you can't see through Jasper. Anyway, that's it for now. What I need to do is go upstairs to my office so that I can put these in the old steamer trunk. So now we will have the ceremonial placement of the brass plate with the agates and Jasper stones and the accompanying journal that belong to my father, Glen S. Player, and our wonderful stepmother, Blanche. Nothing left to say, but happy family tree climbing, everyone, and journaling. That's a wrap.